norms of society, norms of people, conventional ways. I like to be myself, that's the way I am. Um, if you don't like it, you can switch off now and you know, sign off or whatever, yeah? Rivalry for worldly gains distracts you until you visit your grave. In alhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalam wa rasulullah amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, uh, my name is Nadeem. And welcome to what I would call the Dawah Training and Life Skills course. Um, inshallah, this series of videos will give you certain skills which can aid you in the Dawah, in calling to Allah. Brothers and sisters, in this video, I want to talk to, to you about the motivation, incentives and rewards of Dawah. The thing is, there are actually many, many rewards. There are many reasons and there are many motivational reasons why you should get involved in the Dawah. And when I say Dawah, Dawah can be done in multiple forms. But I'm just going to give you a few points, inshallah. The first point, Dawah, engaging in Dawah, it actually makes you human. How, how is that? There is a hadith uh, in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet, upon him in peace, paraphrasing he said the likeness of you and me is like a moth trying to go to go towards the fire you know moth when it's attracted towards the fire and unless it is stopped it will burn this is what the prophet said to the companions this is what i'm doing i'm trying to stop you from going in the fire again just paraphrasing that hadith brothers and sisters the way i look at this subhanallah how we can apply it to our lives is that if we fear the fire of this dunya, if we feel that the fire of this dunya can give you pain, then imagine how much worse is the fire of Jahannam. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are walking down your road, walking down your street. You're walking down your street and for some reason or another, you see someone is on fire. They are burning. Now, what do you do as a human being? Do you just... Ignore that and walk away. Do you just say it's not my problem? Or would you not try and do something? And I'm sure many of you say, of course, I will try and do something. I will either shout around, you know, help, help. I will try and get a cloth. I'll get some water, call the fire brigade. You will try and do something to save that life, to save that person from the fire. Because that's what is being a human being means. That, what, that is what is, it is all about. So if you have this natural inclination to help someone in this dunya, this ephemeral dunya, this um, temporary uh, place for us, then surely the fire of hell, like I said before, is far worse. So we need to save lives through the permission of Allah in the akhirah. This means approaching those people who are completely away from Allah, whether they're Muslim by name or whether they're completely non-Muslim. You need to approach them. You need to talk to them. You need to call them to Allah. To talk about the reality, the divine reality and the existence of Allah through various means. You need to talk about the oneness of Allah, that Allah is one and that he deserves all praise and all worship. This is what we should be doing, inshallah. So this is the first point. The second point, our brothers and sisters, we, we say in the Dawah that Dawah is the most rewardable action in Islam. How is that? How is this action, this Dawah, and there's many actions in Islam, but how is Dawah the most rewarding? How can it give you multiple rewards? I often say with the brothers and sisters in my uh, training and lectures that Dawah, it, for me, it's like a, the best startup. It's the best startup. It's the best investment. How is that? There's a hadith. Um, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Sahih Hadith, where he said that if you were to guide someone to good, then you get a share in the reward. And another Hadith, uh, the Prophet upon him he said, uh, if someone is guided through you, it is better than the red camels. Now the second Hadith, the red camels, of course in that time, in the time of the Prophet upon whom he peace, Red camels were a very expensive commodity, very expensive. It is equal as if the equivalent value of a, like a, a Ferrari, 
You can imagine a red Ferrari. So a red Ferrari, look how much, we know how much it is, a Testarossa or whatever, yeah? So that Ferrari is as equal in value to camels. And the Prophet said that someone's guidance through the permission of Allah, through your efforts, is better than you having an expensive sports car. And going back to the first hadith, now think about that. This is how you break it down. You are now motivated, inshallah. You approach someone and you call them to Islam. Someone who is non-Muslim. It could be a Christian, atheist, Hindu, Sikh, whatever. Let's say you approach someone, his name is John. You talk to John, you give the message of Islam, the message of Tawheed, in a very affectionate, a very warm and very compelling manner. You give an intelligent case for Islam, as you say. John is impressed. John is taken away by your amazing example. John, by the, by the permission of Allah, he accepts Islam. Now, when John accepts Islam, he takes the Shahada. All the actions that he does throughout his life, his all his Salah, his five times a day, his night prayer, the Hajjid, his Athkar, morning and evening Athkar and other Dhikr. He may go all a lot of, he may do multiple Hajj, multiple Umrah. He may do all the lot of fasting, all that fasting other than Ramadan and all the Sadqa and all the Zakat and all the good deeds. He does that throughout his whole life, 60, 70, 80 years. So he's maybe, let's say he's 30, let's say he's 30 years old. And then he dies at the age of, let's say 70, 40 years of Ibadah. All those actions, because you gave him da'wah, you get a share of the reward, subhanAllah, Allah Akbar. And then it goes further. This guy, John, who you gave da'wah to, and remember, you can think of people in your sphere, in your neighborhood, in your workplace, there's always someone that needs da'wah. John then gives da'wah to her, his friend called Kim. Kim is convinced of the truth of Islam. She accepts Islam. And then she does all the good deeds, the salah, the prayer, the fasting, the, uh, she goes to Umrah, she starts a charity, she, she opens up an orphanage. She then marries another revert brother, or maybe she gives that to someone else. She gives that to someone else. He gets married, he accepts Shada, they get married, they have amazing offspring. One becomes a scholar, one becomes a founder of a great charity, one becomes a great da'i, and they travel around the world. And imagine all those people, they guided by the mission of Allah. So all that, those good deeds that Kim and her husband are doing, and all the, the good deeds that their kids are doing when they grow up, John also gets a reward, and you get the reward, because it started with you, subhanAllah. And then if the kids of Kim and the new husband, uh, the new uh, Muslim uh, became the husband, uh, if they give da'wah, as I said, they, all the good deeds, and they give da'wah to someone else, and they give da'wah to someone else, and it's ongoing, you get a share in the reward, subhanAllah. You just think about this. On the, on the day of judgment, on Yawm al-Qiyamah, we're going to be sweating. As the hadith are saying, we're going to be sweating, we're going to be extremely worried. Worried is uh, such a weak word. Because of our sins. You know, we're always sinning, subhanAllah. I'm talking about myself, all of us. We are sinning all the time, day and night. Whether it's not, if it's not the major sins, we are lying, we're little cheating here and there, exaggeration, backbiting, gossiping, Suspicion, not lowering our gaze, it adds up, brothers and sisters. All these little sins add up. Now, if they add up, and we're going to be worried on their judgment, imagine the surprise you get, inshallah, because of the investment you made in this dunya. That, uh, the investment of da'wah. So while you're worried, and you're, you're probably thinking you're doomed because of all those sins, you're thinking back to all your sins, you're told that here are your all the Umrahs you've done, and you see uh, your good deeds and the amal of Umrah. And here are those you know, millions and millions of pounds or uh, dollars of charity you've given all your life. And here are all those millions of worship you've done. And you're thinking, SubhanAllah, I didn't give that much of charity. I just about gave some. And I only went on Umrah once, and I only went on Hajj once. And here we're talking like hundreds of Hajj and Umrah. And you're told, yes, these are the actions, the deeds of the people you gave da'wah to. These are the people Allah guided through you, subhanAllah. And inshallah, these deeds will add up to valleys and mountains, and they're going to help you to survive the day of judgment and enter Jannah. How profound, how beautiful is that? <clears throat> That's the incentive, inshallah. The next point. Allah says uh, in Surah Nufal, Respond to the call of Allah and His Messenger, to that which gives you life. 
brothers and sisters, we are all seeking that alive feeling. Various people get that feeling of being alive in various aspects of their life. Maybe some people who carry, uh, they climb a mountain, the biggest peak in Afghanistan, or the Everest, or K2 or something. And when they get to the top after all that survival, they're at the top and they're saying, I feel alive. You know, people say that. Or maybe uh, after a great sporting achievement, that uh, uh, applause that they'll get, the plaudits, and people chest out, say, I feel alive today. Do you know what? Nothing can equal to that feeling of life than giving da'wah to Allah. Giving da'wah to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, Rabbil Alameen. And as the ayah says, call to that which gives you life. If you want that alive feeling, if you want to feel real alive and, and what this whole life is all about, then engage in da'wah, inshallah. Now, there are actually, like I said, many, many uh, narrations there are many ayat in the Quran and Sunnah and the pious predecessors who talk about dawah. But I also want to give, because you know, we're human beings, we need motivation. We need, we need uh, things that would help us in this dunya as well as the akhirah. Okay? So the next few points are more to do with how dawah can benefit you. Our main aim, our main maqsad is the pleasure of Allah. We're doing it for the sake of Allah. That is the struggle. That is what our goal should be, yeah? Uh, life goals. But there's other benefits. For example, when you give dawah, you're going to, let's say, you give dawah to your neighborhood, you give dawah online, you give dawah to another city, you go with a group of brothers, uh, you give dawah uh, in a, at an event, at a conference, at a book fair, at the mall, you know, subhanAllah, there's many other ways of giving da'wah. So when you're giving da'wah, what will happen is your friends, your friends network and your network in general will increase. Naturally, because when you're giving da'wah, you're always exchanging contact details and you're meeting amazing people. And not just that, you're going to meet people who respect you because da'wah, subhanAllah, like I said, it's for the pleasure of Allah. But da'wah gives you respect. Allah gives you this izzah. This gift is from Allah. And, when, and the people you exchange numbers with, they will respect you. And subhanAllah, I can vouch for this and many other brothers who've been involved in for a long time, many years. Alhamdulillah, even before social media became huge, before WhatsApp and everything, I alhamdulillah, built a, a big connection of good, solid friends around the world, subhanAllah. Around the world, good friends, mashallah. Uh, people of integrity, of genuine people who will help you or who have you know, expertise in certain areas. For example, I, have no, I don't know nothing about IT. Honestly, I am absolutely uh, rubbish at IT. But I know, alhamdulillah, in my WhatsApp and my Facebook, if I were to ask a question, troubleshooting something, I can just put a status or something, and alhamdulillah, somebody will reply. I met them because of the da'wah, subhanAllah. Yeah? So your network will increase. So if your network increases and you'll have more and more friends, that's good for you. That can help you in your business if you're going to start a business. That could help you with general inquiry that, uh, for helping you out, like a, the example of IT troubleshooting. So there's always some brother or sister that's an expert in their field and they can help you out, inshallah. They can give you good advice. So networking is always a good thing. The other thing, Dawah gives you confidence. I take myself as an example. When I was young, believe it or not, I was a very shy person. I was very shy. I was an introvert. I used to get nervous very quickly, anxiety. But the more I did street dawah, because street dawah is a form of dawah and it's my favorite style, the more I did street dawah, the more I talked to people, the more I'm communicating, the confidence I became. And I then um, emulated and took that confidence from street dawah into public speaking because there was a time when public speaking, for me, I was nervous. I used to see myself as a very confident person, but every time I go onto the stage, I am sweating, I am nervous, I am all over the place. And it's always surprised me. But the more I did that, the more I kept on the dawah, the dawah may be confident. Alhamdulillah, now I have, alhamdulillah, no stage fright, <laughs> inshallah. So it can help your public speaking skills. And if dawah can give you confidence in public speak speaking skills, for example, you can use this in your business presentation. You can use this in your institute when you're presenting something to your class or to your professors. You can use this in your, for example, charity fundraising when you want to appeal to uh, people who want to donate to you. 
So public speaking and confidence is something that everyone needs in this life. It can help you in the dunya. And I'm telling you, da'wah is the one that gives you confidence. There's another aspect of this as well. That for me, I have internalized the famous saying, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no other greater power than Allah. When I think about this, I think that I have Allah on my side. The dunya could be one side, I have Allah on my side. I have Allah is going to inshallah back me. And that gives me confidence to face any situation in life. So confidence helps you overcome many obstacles. Dawah also helps you in self-development. It, it really, I really believe this, it makes you uh, strong psychologically. It gives you a strong mindset. Think about it. You're always, when you're, speak, when you're giving Dawah to people, online, offline, you're, to, you're speaking to people about Allah, His oneness, His worship, His glory, His names and attributes, Rububiyya, Uluhiyya, Asma wa Safat, you're talking about Allah, and that is the main objective of your conversation. You're saying the word, the name of Allah so many times. If you're involved now for a long time, days, weeks, months, years, you are constantly doing dhikr. And once you do constant, I, I really believe this, if you do constant dhikr of Allah through da'wah, because you're using the name and the word of Allah in your tongue all the time, then you create almost like a, it's like a bubble, a, a, a field, a, a protective field around you, a protective force field around you. Imagine a protective force field because dhikr. And we, as we know, narrations, the athkar of morning and evening and dhikr of Allah protects you from all kinds of harm and evil. So this helps you psychologically. You're going to go through a lot of things in life. A lot of us will have different challenges and tests. And we need a strong mindset. We need a strong psychology, a uh, strong will to counter that, to face this and Dawah can give you that, inshallah. My last point, and like I said, there's many other reasons, many motivations, many incentives given Dawah. But the last reason I think I want to add is that if you don't give Dawah, you will get Dawah of the dunya. If you don't give Dawah, you will get Dawah. If, so let me explain this. Let's say you're at a workplace. You're the only practicing person. They're Muslims, but they're not practicing. What are they talking about, your colleagues? You're the one who's practicing. Most people in office, if they're not practicing, they're going to talk about celebrities, women, men, you know, movies, music, dunya. And so you're, although you're practicing, you keep hearing their conversations when you go past their booths or something, or past their desks. So at some point, although you're practicing, you're going to get tempted. You might ignore it and say, I'm okay, but you're going to get tempted, subhanAllah. So what you need to do to counter this temptation, to counter, and they're going to give you da'wah. How are they going to give you da'wah? They may not even come to you directly. But just them talking about the dunya and girlfriends and parties, and, you know, and, and Islam, we are told to abstain from this kind of stuff and, and enjoy Jannah. Then you, you uh, if you don't counter this, if you don't start the conversation, you're going to get invited to it. Everywhere you go, whether you're in the UK, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Malaysia, USA, Australia, wherever you are. If you're driving, you're down, going down the streets, in the, in the marketplaces, the bazaars, the dunya will always invite you. All that dunya invitation, whether it's Hollywood, Bollywood, whether it's music, MTV, celebrities, they're always inviting us. That's their dawa. That's their dawa. They're, invite, they're subtly, always in a subtle or even direct manner, inviting to all that is evil. But you need to counter that. By being number, uh, by giving dawah, and when you're giving dawah, you probably more than likely work in a team, and that team is going to help you to survive this dunya, survive these temptations. So I hope you understand that if you don't give dawah, you're going to get dawah at some point. Don't feel secure that I'm just going to practice my salah. I want to pray. I you know I made tawbah many years ago. I start pr I pray five times a day. Alhamdulillah. I recite the Quran. I do the fast. I I abstain, I help my children to abstain from haram. I'm okay. Me and my family are okay. What's happening in society, whether they're worshipping Allah or not, whether they're committing um, evil or sins or haram or shirk or bid'ah, I don't care. SubhanAllah. That don't care attitude is going to haunt you one day. I've seen many practicing brothers and sisters. SubhanAllah. When they say they have this attitude, I'm okay. And at some point, because they're not given dawah, they, you know, subhanAllah, um, they, they get... Uh, they get tempted, and I've seen many brothers, unfortunately, Qadr Allah, they change, they, they, they go back to the Jahal way of life. So they, some people leave Jahaliyyah, they're guided, 
But because they didn't get in dawah and they didn't fight against the temptation by engaging in dawah, it's like they, look, it's like they giving their dawah of the dunya. You have to counter that. So counter that. So it's a counter. If you don't give dawah, you get dawah. Jazakallah for listening. I hope this video has motivated you to get involved in the dawah. There's many ways of doing it, inshallah. May Allah make our dawah pure for His sake. And may Allah accept our good deeds. Jazakallah for listening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.